Now, being a parent, unfortunately, doesn't come with an instruction manual, which means that <laughs> parents have to go on their own instinct. And yes, sometimes they get it very much wrong. But are we being too harsh on ourselves? Well, parenting expert Dr. Mary O'Kane joins us to discuss the concept of good enough parenting and her new book, Perfectly Imperfect Parenting, Connection, Not Perfection. Congratulations, Mary, on the book. Congratulations, oh. Mary. Congratulations, Karen, to making the back page. Unfortunately, <laughs> the endorsement quite. is there on the back. <laughs> anyway, um, why focus on this whole area of parenting in an imperfect way and how that can still work for you and your children? Oh, I, Karen, it's something I absolutely believe in, I really do. And the book is all about their social and emotional development. So it's independence, and it's resilience, it's um, self-esteem, all these skills. But something I think is really important is the pressure we put on ourselves as parents to be perfect. And I think it's, it's sort of this generation, sort of my generation down, like my mum's generation and my grandmother's generation, parented in a very different way. Mm. You know, you'd be going somewhere, throw 15 of them in the back of the car and take them to the beach and whatever. Yeah. But they were more relaxed. But it produced different results in our children. And it's as if, I think, from my generation, we became obsessed with health and safety. Everything has to be perfect. We have to be this perfect human who never gets anything wrong. And then we produce the perfect child. And it doesn't work. You know, imperfection is actually much better for our children. So I thought it was really important to sort of start the book with yeah. that message. Well, and a bit of honesty, because we were just discussing earlier on in the show, a lady came on a TikTok video and talked about how she doesn't enjoy playing Barbies yeah. with her daughter. And, you know, should she feel bad about that? And the abuse that she had online. And this is the thing yeah. with online at the minute. Everybody puts, puts up their perfect videos of parenting mm. and hacks yes. and everything else. So it puts people under so much pressure. Oh, Tommy, absolutely. And they're not showing you the real life. No. When people put up, when, say she, none of us do it. <laughs> yeah. you know, you're not going to say, oh my God, look at this today. We don't. We put up the, the hashtag making memories yeah. bits, you know. Yeah. But we're, we're harsh, very harsh on ourselves and on others, which again, I think it can make us be quite controlling because, you know, if I really believe I have to present this image of being perfect, it tends to make me want to control my children. I want everything to be the way it should be. Mm. And that's not good for our children either, you know, to actually step back and admit we're human, you know, and let our children know they can be human too. And that's absolutely fine. You know, good enough. I'm I was talking about the idea of good enough parenting and this comes from a psychologist called Winnicott years ago and he spoke about you know when they're babies when they're newborns and we, we're devoted to them and that's that's exactly how it should be you know they learn that we're absolutely there for them but his argument is it's really good for us then to start to fail in just little ways in little low stake events we start to fail a bit but then they realise they're resilient. They realise that life isn't always perfect, but that they're strong, that they can cope, that you know, when they're faced with challenges, no, I, you know, I can do this. That's so important So is that let the parent fail or let the child fail as well? Because that's a big thing that I'd say people don't want to let their kids fail and see their kids upset with things. Oh yeah, Tommy, both. That's, you know, it's okay that we fail and they should see mistakes as learning opportunities. Mm. Funny, Tommy, a lot of the research now with our teenagers shows they don't see failure as exactly. learning. In the world you see oh, nowadays, yeah. It's, it's really, and they make a mistake and it's devastation, it's failure. But again, we have to look at ourselves. You know, if I am that little helicopter and I have been that woman, if I'm the lawnmower, like I've, I've been them all, and we're, we're overprotecting and we're trying to do everything. So a helicopter them, is parent, that's up above and just. Oh yeah, I'm hovering, I'm hovering over them the whole time, ready to step in. And the lawnmower is where I'm moving ahead, I'm predicting anything that might impact on the world. And, and, and we do it out of love, you know, we really do. But as you say, they need to learn to make mistakes. They only become resilient when they fail and they realise, you know what, they, they reflect on the failure and they think, no, you know what, I, I can cope with that, I can learn from it, you know, I can move on. It's really important for them. I love as well, like while there may not be a perfect approach to parenting, I love when you mentioned in the book that, what is it, love is spelled T-I-M-E. Yeah. 
That's it. I mean, that's absolutely it. It's, you know, sometimes as parents, particularly when you're working and you think, oh my gosh, I need to have so much time, really important message. It's quality, mm. not quantity. So it's to try and get one-on-one -on -one time. And you know, say Karen, in your situation, you, you have three young children. Mm. It is really not easy to get time one-on-one -on -one with them. But if we sort of say to ourselves, I always say 80-20 rule. If you get it right 80% of the time, you're doing well. And to try and have, 10 minutes a day, if you can, you know, we're not gonna beat ourselves up with each child. I mean, it could be them helping you make the dinner. It could be for a little one, you know, we were talking, telling me about putting them to bed. It oh, could yeah. be that, that little bit of interaction at night time, that little bit of calm, soothing interaction yeah. at no, night time, no, Tommy, no, no, yeah? No. The bed. Fun, fun <laughs> chaos before bed, just to rile them up. And their poor mom comes up and gives out. But it, it's about being in the moment though, isn't it? And, yeah. and uh, put away distractions, put away a phone, and actually oh, yeah. just have that little bit of time. And it doesn't have to be half an hour or two hours. You know, no. it could just be, you know, 10 minutes are good quality time. That's it. I mean, this is the whole message. You know, connection, not perfection. We don't have to be perfect. Okay. It's connection. It's those moments. And they can be everyday moments that you just have that little bit of time, even when they get older, when they're little play. I mean, play is everything mm. when they're young. But we forget we can still be playful with them when they're teenagers. We sometimes forget that. What about when they have their phones all the time, though? Because I would imagine teenagers, you yeah. know, you, you have good time when you're in the car with them, but they're just glued to their phone. Funny you say the car, Tommy. That's the trick. I hope he's not watching. I use with my son, but it's to trap him in the car from when he was little. <laughs> and you know the way some of the kids, they don't like that, you know, eyeball to eyeball yeah. contact. And you can think, how can I communicate with this child? At that moment, I'm walking. I'm not sure walking every day. But if you're side by side, mm. they don't have to make eye contact or in the car. Now, he's older now. And even still, well, back in the day when we could, at least we have 10K now, <laughs> I would say to him, oh, come on, pet, I'll give you a lift. And he thinks I'm being nice. And I'm actually trying to get that little bit. He doesn't know, he's looking out the window, but you're just connecting with them. It's whatever you can make the most of with your kid. And you know your child better than anybody else. Um, what were the other areas that you really wanted to focus on within the book? What was really important for you to zone in on? You know, Karen, it's all the social and emotional stuff. So as we've been talking about, resilience, self-esteem, Karen's self-esteem is huge. I have another chapter on parenting with patience because I think that's one a lot of us, particularly during lockdown, have struggled yeah. with. You know, remembering to practice the pause and, and I talk a lot about their brain development and I talk a lot about psychology and I've tried to do it in a really simple way. I love psychology. Yeah. I've tried to pick stuff that I think parents will be interested in and say, look, okay, here's how their brain is developing. Now, do you know why that's important? Because that means we need to do this. Or sometimes it explains why they act. You know, our teenagers and our toddlers, like when you understand what's going on in the ear, it kind of makes sense how they behave. So I've tried to take brain development of psychology, say, here it is in simple terms, and now this is what we should do when we know that. But how do parents know? It's hard for you to know what's going through your kids' brains with the likes of social media and oh. that sort of thing, because it's so different and it's so alien. It's not like what we grew up no. with. It's oh, not yeah. what you grow up with. You know, this yeah. is all new. And well, for parents yeah. to try and parent through that is difficult. Funny you mention that, Tommy. I, there were some challenges I put in as well. And one is anxiety because it's huge. And the other is social media mm. because it is just making such a difference. But again, I would say, keep coming back to connection. You know, we talk about um, our children online. Do we really know what they're doing? That's a lot mm, of it. No. We have to educate ourselves. So it's about sometimes sitting down and playing with them. I mean, you know, with say like Minecraft here, yours might be at the Minecraft point, yeah, Karen, I know. asking about it for sure. Oh, and Minecraft, oh my gosh, there's some great learning opportunities genuinely in Minecraft right. but the trick is and it will test your patience you'll be reading the patience chapter again <laughs> the trick Long with this part of the book <laughs> yeah is to yeah, is to sit with them so you're actually seeing what they're doing online if you're worried about them with something online say show me I don't understand that go on and show me yeah. so you're sitting with them and they're teaching you but you're also seeing what's involved mm. in your learning you know it's it's knowledge is power isn't it that's part mm. of it for us yeah, it's a challenge isn't it oh it is but yeah. Mary has the answers. There's, here's the answer. <laughs> it's okay, guys. We're going to get through anyway. it. <laughs>